Sorry. Okay, well, uh, good morning, and uh, a little bit different format coming to you from the Z Studio um, of Zedja. And what I'm going to do now is read a bit here. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded unto death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast." And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the power was given to him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man ha has an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and... He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercises all power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven to the earth in the sight of men, and receives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should that they should make an image of the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship uh, the image of the beast should be killed. He caused it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark on their right, in their right hand and in their fore, or in their foreheads. And that no man shall buy or sell, save that he have that mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. And um, I don't think it's uh, too early to be reading that in terms of where we are in this whole um, debacle that you call the world. Unfortunately, now we have... Um, the Middle East going up in flames. We have uh, the president of the United States apparently immune to uh, any and all political wounds. Certainly this is not a mortal wound, but any and all political wounds and being protected because all these have one thing in common. The media and, uh, you know, I mean, we, 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 we bandy about the word socialism and all these things, but basically what we're talking about is we're talking about the um, incredible um, will to, uh, to destruction, which the world goes into, and which all are hypnotized and worshiping the beast, and which all are speaking as dragons, and which all are actually possessed uh, with this um, idea of a relentless push into chaos and the death of themselves and their own children, the death of pretty much everything. And uh, what can we say about it? Um, first of all, take heart because nothing is really set in cement. The only thing I can come at this with is this idea that the plans on the books for a world war the plans on the docket for a world leader, um, which I don't believe that this leader will be unless he goes through some sort of, because there's so much disrespect of this particular leader, Obama, that I don't really you know, consider him to be um, the beast or um, 
the image of the beast or, or, you know, I think he has his followers who set, who tend to worship him. And in the beginning he had, let's say this anointing of, um, you know, a Messiah, which would be a false Messiah and has spoken great blasphemies against the most high and the people of the most high, both on heaven and on earth and has done a lot of these things that, um, are prophesied to occur. The thing that's so strange now is, and a lot of people said, well, we're not going to be going into um, any kind of, uh, we're not going to be going into this um, new world order, or we're not going to be going into this end time scenario, mainly because um, this couldn't possibly be the time. Other people are saying, well, 2018, 19, you know, seven years from now gives us 2019 coinciding with the book of Daniel in terms of bringing about the end of this situation. I'm not really going to quibble with that. I'm just going to say that I think between here and there and should this continue and should this guy get elected again, uh, what you'll see is, um, the quick descent into war, war everywhere. Uh, And part of the reason is because there really just isn't a lot to go around. And when there's not a lot to go around, when there's a a scarcity of resources, which is done artificially, then war must come, which is, you know, as I said, been planned. But we've seen this scenario before again and again where it didn't go to that, where the, the thing kind of fell apart, the wheels came off of it, which is what you're seeing now. You're also seeing the wheels come off of their plans. Um, and at the same time, it's a very dangerous power vacuum in the world as we, you know, this president is standing down, I think in a way to create more chaos and a perception of more weakness, which causes more people to act up, say around the world. Um, that, that always happens when there's a power vacuum. And at the same time we have, um, you know, those key things that have occurred, again, in the name of Americans, you know, the greatest power on earth that they're trying to take down to a third world status, um, you have people, uh, a great deal of them, who have cheered on no God and who have um, actually, I should put that sound clip in there too, I will before I produce this. They've cheered on no God they voted for no God, and they, they take great relish in um, kicking God out. And that would be about, you know, half the country, who also are in the tank for the president and also in the tank for socialism and communism. And the world is salivating at that idea, and they're pushing now to try to get this through, not really giving a damn how many people have to die as a result. And all of this danger is going on. The, the, the wise people of the earth know that, and hopefully they're repenting. Um, you will see great um, things from the skies as a confirmation. If this is the time of, say, a wrap-up, and I don't say it isn't, you will start to see great signs and wonders in the heavens. You'll see, uh, you, you know... This weather has never been weather we've had before. These things have never been things we've seen before. Those signs have never been things we've seen before in the heavens. These kinds of anomalies upon the earth are things we've never seen before. These supernatural events are things we've never seen before. And so a lot of that is going on, uh, which gives us kind of, uh, how can I put it? This gives us pause and lets us know that... uh, that things are not the way they were, and they never will go back to the way they were, and there never will be another complacency, uh, a, a hypnosis, really, that had, um, you know, kind of kept the people in a state of hypnotic um, inertia uh, since World War II. And, you know, but the same things were going on. And, and again, the churches, the corruption of the churches, nobody trembles when a Christian church prays this way or that way, it doesn't really matter because they're, they're already hamstrung by their oath to the state. So therefore they're not a church 
technically under the the law of Yahweh, under the law of Christ, in terms of what constitutes a church. These are just corrupt manifestations wherein the Lord will pull people out who um, are his and who are there because it made sense to go to a place that said Jesus and had a cross on it. And so they went there. But the greatest abrogation of responsibility has been the churches, because even a small church, if um, free, praying, would be, um, would be causing havoc. There isn't that. It's almost like the spider who's wrapped up the um, prey in, in silk, keeping it alive, but ineffective in the web, waiting for that time of the spider likes to eat a meal, and that meal must be um, alive. So the spider has wrapped up its prey and kept it anesthetized and kind of in a state of um, inertia for that time of feeding. And that's kind of like where the people are. A small group of people able to perpetrate this on the majority. You have political leaders coming out speaking for these people that worship the beast, speaking for the Satanist of the world, the Clintons, the, um, um, you know, the various people coming out and... um, And then Clinton said that the people were confused because they didn't understand the need for higher taxes and uh, more spending, and the American people are thus easily confused, showing his elitist uh, attitude and the fact that he's not for the people at all, but representing his group of people behind the scenes that want to make this social change. Obama's right in the same line with them, trained by the same people to uh, be another player in bringing about this change, which is a global secular state of, uh, that we could call communism, but they would just call the New World Order or whatever. Um, and so they're not happy because they're not bringing it in. It's not going the way that they thought it would go. And then there really is an election, and they really do care about the election, or they wouldn't spend so much money. The idea that elections are already fixed I don't think you can actually say that given the amount of money being spent, given the amount of sacrifice being done, given the amount of worry that you see people worrying about. You know, they may try to fix it. They may do a lot of things, uh, but it doesn't mean that they're going to get their way. Okay. Um, And if they were going to get their way, if they did have it in the bag, they wouldn't, you wouldn't see campaigning. You wouldn't see um, millions and, 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 and tens and hundreds of millions of dollars <clears throat> spent on ads and things like that. Um, then you have Ahmadinejad coming out and saying, Israel will be eliminated, okay? Which now people say, that the guy's just bluffing. Um, they really don't have the power to do that at the moment. Um, and, you know, they have new drones and they're trying to make them into, you know, they have weapons of mass destruction. We better stop them. But the greater agenda going on behind the scenes is basically that, um, you know, these people are all, again, to use the worn out phrase by now, in the tank um, for this new global order, which does not include you and me. You are not in the club. I am not in the club. And, you know, the, 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 the idea is to reduce the population to a certain manageable amount and kind of hit the reset button under the guise of this war that nobody could stop. And it just so happened that it was very destructive, and a lot of people died, but now we've got to come together with what's left, and you people are the uh, slaves. You're going to serve, and your children will be ours, and we'll train them to serve us, and the elites will uh, have their playground, finally, which will be the earth at their beck and call, and at the same time, and I don't need to really go through this, but there's all the transgenics and all the... You know, the idea of downloading, uh, they've been doing this with live people from the beginning, but I mean, the idea of downloading yourself into a clone uh, so you can live indefinitely uh, in this new Atlantean state of utopia, which I promise you, they will never get. Well, they listen. They're going to listen to this because it's prophetic about them. They're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. You will be the witnesses of it. The idea that um, there's going to be an escape by Jesus and you won't have to suffer, I don't think that's really um, something you ought to wait on. If it happens, great. But I don't think you should wait on it because, you know, it's important that you live now, that you exist in this dialogue, in this conversation, because in a way it's all a test to see, you know, will you, will you... um, Serve the beast, or are you going to serve? 
you know, the, uh, uh, the Lord. I mean, you know, are you going to serve Satan or are you going to serve the Lord? And it's really going to come down to that. Um, as far as the rollout of the aliens, transgenics, um, we already have the rollout in the skies. I mean, you, those people that look for the chemtrails, unbelievable. Every time that there is a, uh, you know, a rainstorm or anything coming in, you see them going back and forth across the sky. They're not necessarily stopping the rain every time, but they're lacing it with things that hit the ground and, of course, affect people. But it's like a, almost a terraforming of the earth for some new species, I, I, you know, as w this is what I'm getting, um, that the New World Order is a new species. And that new species is going to need the earth to be a certain way. Hence, you have the chemtrails, unlimited money, unlimited power. Going back again to the beginning where you have, um, you know, Jesus, and, and I just want to say, uh, uh, let's see, and, you know, I, I, let's see if I can, um, okay, well, you recall, you recall that, uh, you recall that, that the Lord um, will smite them, and that really nobody has the power to um, overturn God's way or overturn God's plan. So when we look at all this, we see that there is definitely a plan and that the plan is, um, as always, to um, include a great deal of pain and suffering and it will look like as if they've won. And then, you know, the flipping over of it occurs. Now, this also occurs, has occurred several times within history, but it never, it never stopped kingdoms from falling. It never stopped Babylon from falling. It never stopped um, the Roman Empire from falling. It never stopped any of the empires from falling, including this one. The difference between this one and that one, as it were, is just... This this idea that um, the rights of human beings flow from the creator. And that may be enough to have, in a sense, staved it off. Uh, but in no way, in no way are people going to be um, exempt from the test. I guess that's what I, I really intend to say. And the test is going to be, is, is is a daily thing. You know, will you... Um, you know, what will you do in this regard? Will you, will you serve the beast? Will you give in and serve the state? Will you go for uh, that which is convenient at the, um, will you become a hypocrite? You know, that's really the problem with the churches. They became hypocrites because they basically made a deal with a beast and then um, they do praise Jesus all day long and they wonder, well, why is our, why are our prayers moot? Why you know, we get little stuff, you know, we pray over the children, they get healed and you know, there's things like that. They have testimonies, but in terms of moving the earth, no, the thing that they're worried about is, are these underground churches that are not beholden to anyone, but Jesus Christ. And they move at the same time. I told you before that Jesus is, they're, they're, they're making it look like Jesus is non-existent. He's not really in the world equation. It's Islam and, and Allah, but Jesus is not in the equation. He's not part of this. So that's why we called for the churches to reform, so that they, when they pray, they could move mountains. They can't right now. And they haven't been able to throughout my lifetime. And, you know, and I found out the reason, because they worship the beast and they're part of the beast system. And uh, what can I do about it? I didn't invent it. I didn't make them like that. Um, and that includes all Protestant denominations and, and anything that's really of the 501c3 is a red flag. And then you go in there and you find out, yep, there are sermons that can't be preached. There's prophesying that can't be prophesied. There's the works of God that can't go on. But on the other hand, they do the good work of charity and, um, you know, uh, visiting the sick and doing, doing those kind of overt things that, you know, that are good. 
So it's kind of a mixed bag. And like if you read the in the book of Revelation uh, in the very beginning, you'll see that, yes, indeed, it's a mixed bag. Um, like, for example, under the church of Ephesus write, these things uh, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walks upon the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you can't bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. So <laughs> there's nothing new here. Okay, that's uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, the first three verses. And has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Uh, nevertheless, I am somewhat against thee because you have left thy first love. Well, what does that mean? You know, it says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. Do those first works or else I will come to you quickly. will remove your candlestick out of this place. That is, you know, remove you, except you repent but this thou hast, that thou hast the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. In other words, the Nicolaitans all, you know, doing good on the surface. But then underneath is this, um, you know, this horrible, um, you know, connection. To the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? These things saith he, which hath a sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. So you dwell where Satan is, okay? So that's ex all I'm saying. And thou behold, holdest fast to my name and has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against you because thou hast there them that hold the doctr doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat sacrifice, things sacrificed to idols and commit fornication. So thou... <laughs> so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, again repeated. Repent or else I will come to you quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. And I believe that's what we have. We have Jesus actually fighting the churches and denying the prayers and denying the power thereof in saying, you know, you have an appearance of, of holiness, an appearance like um, you know, like the, 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 the Jews at the time of Jesus, you appear to be holy, but you kill the prophets and you put them up on the wall to worship, but you kill Jesus and you put them up on the wall, you can worship him. And so you are the system of Babylon and you were back then. And no one trembled back then when the, uh, when the temples were praying, nobody prayed, no one, no one trembled then. The only time they trembled was in the early church when they, um, you know, we're out in the countryside and, and the people in the town were, you know, of Jerusalem were freaked out and they'd come to look and spy on them, worried that, you know, God's going to answer their prayers. That worry is not going on today. In fact, people laugh at Christians. Laugh, not meaning mocking, laugh because of having no um, efficacy, which is really, in a sense, the whole issue, isn't it? If you're praying and not getting anywhere, perhaps it's time to look at what the block would be. You know, prayer, and, and you know, I, I can attest to this, being a goody two-shoes doesn't um, actually make it. In other words, that doesn't mean that, you know, there's going to be a change. Um Ragtag individuals, hardcore, you know, sinners that are struggling to, to walk that walk with Christ who do not have the impediment of the Babylon affiliation and oath and or the, um, you know, secret connection, affiliation, ranking and so forth of the world system. Uh, they tend to scare the heck out of people when they pray. How about biker gangs? Right. And they're still not clean and they're still not OK, but they're uh, they're into Jesus and they're doing the best they can. You know, it's. Uh, just to give an example, and and really, when I say biker gangs, I'm I'm describing how the uh, the early apostles really were with Jesus. This was a ragtag lot, you know. This was a not the um, the pinnacles of society. These are not the people beyond reproach. I mean, when you get to the point of saying, okay, politicians are beyond reproach and they really deserve to be bowed down to and respected, then you then you've got a serious problem. Then you have a serious problem because 
there's nothing that goes on in politics or any institution on earth that isn't beholden to Satan that owns everything. And, and you know, he owns it for now. He's kind of like, in a way, he's leasing it. <laughs> you know, he's, he's not really the owner. And, and the lease is up at a certain time. So let's talk about that time now. What do you think the time will be? You know, you keep waiting and watching and getting disappointed. And the reason you're disappointed is because you think that the time should be now. You think that um, this whole thing should be wrapped up now. And it looked, you know, it looked like a lot of people were really kind of excited when all the Middle East was breaking down, like there'd be a huge war kind of a thing going on. And, um, and what ended up happening? It got calmed down. You know, people went home, they did whatever they were going to do. And now we're dealing with uh, the aftermath of that and the election. And people are wondering, are we really going to have um, a respite from this? Or is this going to go all the way? Well, if Obama gets elected again, um, you can, I guess politically, you know, it would mean that the forces of... uh, Global change, new world order, all that stuff would be in control, at least for, you know, a time. The people don't seem to want to wake up. And when they realize that, you know, the food stamps are going to be taken away, as will the medical care and everything else, when finally they get what they want, maybe at that point they'll wake up. But again, there's no guarantee. Again, there's no guarantee. So what do we really, really need to say is that this system that we hold so dear is cracking up, does that mean the Lord's coming? Meaning, you know, all in Christ and the return of Christ and the new dimension of Christ and all that makes all things new, including the earth and the cosmos. And then really the veils are ripped and we enter into the real reality, not the shadowy world we are in now, but the real reality, which is another dimension, which is... um, which we all yearn for, is another dimension um, where there is no death and where there is a whole other a thing in place, um, you know, a place where there is no sin. It doesn't really occur. It's all, you know, just fidelity to God. and, And, you know, it's kind of a limitless, unlimited thing. But what does that really mean? Well, you can't know because it's a paradox. You can't know because your mind can't fathom the end of time. You can't know because you may not even be able to understand or comprehend the the kind of being you would be. And um, a lot of people say, well, it's going to be like this, only we're going to be, you know, kind of like comic book heroes, like Superman. It's like, no, that's not it. Another dimension does not have the same properties of space and time as this one. So it may not be very satisfying to you. But for the people that just want to be with the Lord, it would be very satisfying. And I think that's going to be granted. Uh, As far as the other people, there are no other people. And so that's the end of that argument, because technically there is only what is and what isn't isn't. I mean, (laughs) go back to Clinton. What isn't isn't, meaning, you know, if they never were, then they would not be. And there would be no memory of them or any memory of the trauma or any memory of the uh, the pain and suffering that people went through. So what do we say to the to the institutions? What do we say to the uh, the institution of Congress? Um, prepare to you, you know you, the, the the thing's going to collapse. You're going to be put to an end. You may be put out of your existence. You better be ready at all times to die. That's what I tell any member of Congress, the president, um, anyone in the military, anyone in any kind of corporation, anyone going to their job every day. I would just say, yeah, maybe it'll go on another couple hundred years. But at the point it's at now, we're on a trajectory and a prophetic trajectory to um, right now there's like a shot to 2019 and people say, well, we're entering into the time of tribulation. And I would say there needs to be an event and there would be an event to that. Um. It's not like people would be in the in the time of tribulation and not really and not be sure about it. You would know about that time. And the other thing is, um, 
And a lot of people are feeling that. A lot of people are feeling like this is it. This is it. There really isn't anything else. Prepare to meet your maker one way or the other. And I would say as I get older, that possibility in reality, of course, is very strong because whether I go this way or that, I'll be meeting my maker pretty soon. But meeting him, wait a second, since he's within me, um, I meet him every day, so I guess there wouldn't be much of a change. Being that I believe in Jesus Christ and I am in Christ, then, you know, the judgment's already been made. You know, it's a, it's a clear shot. I have a pretty clear conscience. I would not have a clear conscience if I were um, sowing to the world system and on the, out of the other side of my mouth saying, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, Lord. I don't think I would be, I would be looking, I'd be like whistling by the graveyard, wouldn't I? And that's what the majority of Christians in the United States and people in the overt Chinese Christian, you know, in the, in the religion, the official religions, they're just being held captive as slaves. And I, you know, nothing I can do about that. They, they want to worship. They need to be there. They need that fellowship. They need those people. They want to feel like they're doing good. They need to be able to do those charity works. They need something to make them feel like they're not a piece of crap, a piece of garbage. So they go there hoping for that absolution every week. And um, I'm here to tell you, you know, if you need other people to do that for you, you ain't doing it right. You know, go there, go there. But if you're going to be like dependent upon them like a crutch, meaning you yourself can't stand up on your own two feet um, and, you know, you need to be bolstered up by these people, then, uh, you know, perhaps it's time for you to um, go face the mirror and take a look at what's going on. Now, we've talked about this and talked about it. So let's get on to something new. And something new is signs from the sky. There will be signs in the heavens, just like there were with Jesus' birth, because this is a birth, this is a birth too. And there'll be signs in the heavens that would be inexplicable to people that say, that's a UFO, no, that's a comet, no, that's this, that's that. But there'll be many of them, and they'll begin pretty soon. And these signs will confuse people, make them wonder and the uh, Luciferians are going to think, ah, we got this handled. We knew this was coming. This is all part of the cosmos of the time we're in. And since we're ahead in time, we've already factored it backwards to where we are now. And remember, we're back in time. If we weren't back in time, the Lord could not have spoken the end from the beginning, could he have? So we're back in time. And that time is mutable, meaning it will end up being the right amount of time, but it will appear to be manipulatable while we're in it, meaning you could have another 200 years here, 500 years there, one year, minus years, uh, events going on right and left that make no sense, evil people seeming to rule the planet and do all kinds of evil where you say, God, are you impotent? But since it's all irrelevant ultimately compared to what will be when everything catches up with itself, the argument can be made that it didn't really exist and God really never allowed evil because there really is no evil, except it was a part of the birthing process into what is real, and it's not really part of reality, and it never did exist, and there never, you know, it just depends on the perspective. Therefore, you can't question God or query God about anything because you can't see to do that. You don't have the standing to be able to query God. You can just go, oh, that flame is hot. God, please stop. You won't stop it. You're a bad guy, you know, and, and, oh, look at all those starving kids. You're a bad guy. And, and then in the end, they'll be, oh, they weren't really starving. I see. I see. It just seemed, yeah, okay. So <laughs> all the world's a stage, uh, correct. Um, you know, more like it's just an unformed, unreal kind of process that we're in that eventuates in a birth and that birth called the body of Christ or the true church exists as like the stars in the heavens. And with the same mobility or same, same uh, amazement of the stars in the heavens. In other words, it's a, it's a huge thing. Okay. 
And it's, it's like entering into real reality where you, before you were in a dream world. And in the dream world, you could dream of monsters and all kinds of things. But when you finally wake up, you realize, oh, that's not really what's going on. I see. I was quest- questioning God because I thought he was evil. Um, you know, that being said, um, I want to make some more predictions. The Church of America will not repent. That is, the denominations of the 501c3 will never repent. And there's almost no use talking about it anymore. They'll ne- they, the word is they won't repent. The doors are shut. They can't. And they'll be prevented from it, even, <laughs> amazingly enough. Um, some may get out of there. I don't know. But they're not going to change. I don't mind going there. You know, you go and you have a wedding and you get the, the drunk pastor say a few words and or, or the eulogy or, you know, whatever. But it's, it's just, they know the sham. The rituals will go on and they can be beautiful and nice and, and lovely. And, you know, you have confirmation and you have christenings and you have marriages and, and deaths. And, you know, you have confessions in the Catholic Church and you have, uh, um, you know, the Eucharist and you have all those different things which are, uh, you know, deal with the individual. The individual is not done here by any stretch. It's just that the, the collective system of Babylon system churches will not repent because they're part of Babylon. Either will Bohemian Grove, either will um, your school, your university, your fraternities and sororities, your um, elite units in the military, your 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 elite uh, sports clubs, your um, you know your your clubs and affiliations, your rank. Nothing is going to repent, and now we have the recipe for the final push. It's going to come from the sky. That's right. Um, just as you look up and see these chemtrails, which are kind of supernatural in a way, they cover the whole earth. I don't know if you noticed this, but um, yeah, they do tend to kill people off, but at the same time, they're covering the whole earth. In other words, they are unabashedly destroying people, destroying livestock, destroying crops, destroyers of the earth. They're called, in the Bible calls them the earth dwellers. Let's see this, if I pull this Bible up here. I wonder if I put in the, the, the name Earth Dwellers. Let's see. Um, why, why is not that not there? I'm not seeing Earth, Kingdoms of the Earth. I said Earth Dwellers. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. We're getting the Matthew. And how do I get, well, I can't, I can't really see, um, I can't really see my uh, weight. <laughs> <laughs> to some of these things. Okay, well, we can just forget that. Um, let's see what it says if they're listed in the New Testament. Earth, try one more time. Earth dweller. There aren't any. Okay, earth dwell. Okay. Well, they're not really showing me anything. Okay. Who dwell upon the earth. Okay, I see. I see. I'm just having to, you know, while you're sitting there learning how to work this. This was a Bible for the Mac. I really don't know. There's stuff that's in the way where I can't get to the... Um, in other words, there's there's this commentary that's in the way that won't allow me to actually read my verses about earth dwellers, which is really sad because... Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Oh, dwell upon the face of the earth. Um, well, there's the earth dwellers. These are these are people that basically, for them, uh, the earth is is um, is it. There really isn't anything else but the earth. And for them, they're sowing to the earth. They're earth dwellers, and and it means that there is no god. There is nothing beyond the earth. It's you do what you can do on the earth because you're an earth dweller, and then you die, and that's it. And the Lord is not going to argue with that. And the earth dwellers sort of run the Luciferian lodges and sort of run the churches and run the institutions. And they're, they're mainly earth dwellers. So they're very interested in um, 
you know, secular change of people. And they really do believe that people can be morphed into whatever they feel like they should be. In other words, they can evolve or be forced to evolve into good little slaves or whatever that, that they want. And they can do it through genetics or anything else. But, um, but, you know, they don't believe in a spiritual afterlife. They believe to get that, they would have to develop clones that they could download themselves into, put their brains in, whatever, so they could go on. They don't believe there's any, any, any spiritual life afterwards or that the spiritual life is real. They think this is all that's real and they'll do anything to stay here. And they're earth dwellers. That's why we are to keep our eyes on heaven and on the things of heaven and on the things of the Lord, because then the things of the earth and the earth dwellers and all the things they do doesn't affect us. And if it doesn't affect us, then that's good. In other words, then we have a peaceful life. You know, the things they do or don't do have nothing to do with us. And that's been, you know, the liberation of the, and, and that, by the way, is where they get angry. And when they start um, testing people and say, well, will you turn against Jesus if I, I'm going to cut your head off or cut your kid's head off unless you renounce Jesus, et cetera. And that you, they'll, you'll get into things like that because these earth dwellers, that's all they can think about. And they want everyone to conform. And so that's why I say there is no need for conformity in the churches because the churches are places of, of spiritual growth and spiritual um, things. Conformity is a term that the earth dwellers use. It's, a, it's an earth dwelling term. It means to um, change yourself to basically be like the others. In Rome, do as the Romans do. It's a physical, carnal, flesh term, conform. It has nothing to do with being conformed to the mind of Christ or something, which is a spiritual term. I mean, using the same word, but it doesn't mean the same thing. So conformity, and you know, when you get to the churches, what you realize is if you're not going to conform to the world system and you're going to church to escape that because that's what Jesus has promised, they will jump on you and say, we hate people that don't conform because, you know, who are you to, to rock the boat? And so that's, that, there really isn't any way around that. And that's why I can say with 100% surety, 100% fact that these people are going to burn. If God is serious about his word, if his word is true, then according to his word, they would burn, period. There really isn't, it's not up to me. It's, I don't have any opinion on it other than, you know, you make your choice. If you want to burn, then go ahead and conform because that's what will happen to you. Um, Jesus calls us out from that, from the world to walk with him, you know, which means that you would be unconformed from the world and un disconnected from your connection and deranked from the rank that you had built up over the years. And you would be a new creature in Christ starting over again. And if you're not willing to start over again, then you're going to burn. It's, it's your choice. It, it's all of our choice. We have the right to go back to um, Sodom and Gomorrah, let's say, and, and become, you know, like Lot's wife to turn back. You have the right to do that. You have the right to worship the golden calf in the midst of uh, the struggle of Moses in the, in the desert. You know, you can rebel, but basically um, the only one, you know, those people got eliminated. They were, they were purged. The only people that really made it were the people that were loyal to Moses and um, not the people that were going to rebel against it because rebelling against that was rebelling against God. And there was no way to have both the wheat and the tares together on that. They had to be in agreement and lined up or God would smite them. And Moses knew that there would be, none of them would survive if, if he allowed rebellion. So, you know, and then they say, well, they're rebelling against the church and Jesus and, and how cool it is to, to um, do sex acts on the stage that are, that, that they think are blasphemous to the Lord. Like the Lord's never seen that before. And, and to, uh, to do rebellious things in the sight of God on stage, like Lady Gaga and so forth. And that they're really being something cool and they get rewarded for that because, you know, the whole goal of it is to make sure that they never get away to be saved. And she as an evangelist is there to make sure that, you know, all the people that listen to her know it's cool to rebel against 
really um, ultimately God and that those are the cool people and you can have fun and go to parties and it's all really cool. And (laughs) not realizing, of course, that Gaga herself is the conforming queen. She's conformed to exactly the way of the world and has not, in fact, conformed to it and not rebelled against it. She hasn't even really rebelled against God. She's rebelled against what she perceives to be uh, sort of this, this, the old mores, you know, no gay marriage and those evil people, no, no abortion, <laughs> those evil, no, you know, we want drugs and... Well, that's not really rebelling against anything. That's that's the old school. That's norm. Excuse me, but that's the norm on earth. She's simply conforming and saying to everyone else, if you don't conform, you're going to be uncool and cast out, period. I make my case. She's uncool, technically, because she's not a rebel, but a conformist. And the same goes with all of Hollywood. They're all, they're, oh, I'm cool. I'm Johnny Depp. I'm really, you know, anti-Christ. And it's, no, he's not anti-Christ. He's pro-earth dwelling. He's might as well wear a three-piece suit and a tie and cut his hair and go around with some glasses and a little slide roll or something because that's what he is. He is, you know, um, I'm just giving the image. I don't know him personally. I'm just saying that's the image that comes forth from the cool, the, the, I mean, you know, the, you know, the quacks, you know, the Viper Club, right? What's that about? Being on the Sunset Strip, um, all the cool people that you see up there, you know, they've all, they've all rebelled, but they've all conformed. And then many of them dying early because if you do lots of uh, dissipating things, you die. And they're all up there worshiping, uh, you know, the, 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 the ghosts of old bands and stuff at the Whiskey A Go-Go and all this. And they're all lost. They all think, yeah, the Sunset Strip is a very concentrated form of what I'm talking about. Go up there and have lunch someday and you'll, you know, you'll start to just see, oh, my God, all these people are like, they're all trying to be cool. And they're all like, you know, totally obeying the law. No one is a rebel. Everyone is just programmed and they're all robots and no one thinks for themselves. And it's just like unbelievable. It's, it's the ultimate surface dweller. These are shallow surfacey people that the Bible calls the earth dwellers and the earth dwellers are like pathetic because they can't see the things of the spirit. They can't understand that this is but a, an illusion. They, they, they really buy into it. And, um, for that they're rewarded with awards and I don't need no salvation. I I like to say that uh, I'm pro-gay marriage and thank you for my award. And uh, I think it's just amazing that we even have to deal with this subject anymore. <laughs> Where the gay marriage issue isn't got doesn't have anything to do with gay marriage at all or marriage of, of people of the same sex. It doesn't have anything to do with that at all or equal a, a rights or anything else. It just has to do with being cool. It's, it's belonging, being accepted by other earth dwellers who have a pact of death that they're going to hold, hold it unto death. And then they believe they're actually going to get a reward because they've been told that. I mean, they've been, they've been conditioned to think that, that by bringing in this rebellion on earth, eventually there will be a utopia and they will be rewarded. No, they will die, and uh, they will be forgotten, and they will be as if they never were, but that doesn't matter to them. They think they're going to get all that spoil because this is a war. They know it's a war, and they know they can be as mean as possible, and they can say and do whatever they want, and and they can become very, very um, loud with their, uh, quote, rebelling, rebelling and nudity and... Uh, fornication and whatnot, thinking that, oh my God, that's cool. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow. Not realizing that this sort of thing's been going on from the beginning of time. Not realizing they've just fallen into a trap, which is basically you're too afraid to rebel, so you'll conform. You know, you know being cool, getting rewards begins in high school, even before that now. 
of the people who are going to be cool. I mean, you're going to dress with the same hat that so-and-so wears and the same clothes that so-and-so wears, and you're going to have the same thing as so-and-so. You're going to talk just like, you know, you're going to talk the new slang, whatever it is, whatever the local thing is. You're going to do all that, and you're going to, um, when you can, find the way or the path of, of, of rebellion so that you can be vetted, meaning you're going to have to serve adults uh, sexually and otherwise, and uh, or do dirty work or something to that effect to get yourself vetted and pos- into a position. And then they're going to arrange for the forces of magic to, to make sure you're worshipped. You're going to love that worship, so you're going to do even more. And you're going to have that magical touch, and you're going to do that even more. You're going to have that sheen. You're going to do it even more. And then one day when you least expect it, boom, gone. You're out of here as if you never were done. And I can guarantee this. Not one of them will say that life will escape sorrow in their lives. And not one of them is going to feel like they are satisfied they got what they wanted. They're always going to feel like they've been losing and they've been kind of chumped out and they didn't get everything they wanted for selling their soul. In other words, if they've agreed to go ahead and go into death and just blow the whole thing for the five minutes of fame, they at least want to be satisfied because in the end, they have to know that's what they're doing when they choose against God. They have to know in the secret ritual anyway, they have to know in their heart that they are choosing against God in order to go to the higher level because you can't go to the higher level unless you know God exists and you choose against him to lose your soul. You choose to give your soul to the, to the collective. And uh, you have to know that God is God to know that you, you have to know what's going on in that ritual that's your, your birthday. In your birthday party, you've got to know what's going on. You've got to consciously realize that if there's a hell, you're going to it. You have to say that, well, this is it. <laughs> and then you have to go, oh, I don't give a damn. I'm happy as could be. I don't need anything. Look at that. I'm having a great life. To hell with God and all that stupid stuff. Ah, this is cool. Yeah. And really, ultimately, these people are the biggest chumps because... Um, they bought it cheap. They bought the used car, thinking it was new. They thought it was a Ferrari. It's a broken down Chevy Volt. <laughs> and um, they, they get pissed. And so what they do then is in their institutions and whatnot, since they own them all, they should have figured out that, gosh, if all the institutions supported them, then they must be non-rebels operating out of fear. I better get with the program or I'm gonna, I don't want to have a bad life. So, so they're agreeing with um, Republicans and Democrats and, and presidents and kings, and, and they're agreeing with the universities, and they're agreeing with the status quo. Not rebels, just a charade. It's kind of a double-double in terms of deception because you think, oh, they're so rebellious, it's so cool. I remember during the days in the 90s of Marilyn Manson, and he was so wicked. And now you see him today, Brian uh, Warner, I think his name is. And gosh, the looks are gone. And, you know, that it's just really sad. You know, it's just really sad. That, you know, there was that that, that five minutes is up and now it's going to just be a lifetime of, you know, if somebody has a conscience, it's a lifetime of um, regret after after the fame is over. You know, it's, oh, yeah, that that's right. They're coming up with the, uh, there's going to be another album, you know, the comeback album. Don't worry, it's going to happen. But it's never going to happen because it wasn't ever about the music. It was really just about fame. It was really about deception. And, you know, the lights are very bright and, and you know, you're, you're given a path and, you know, on the path it says, do this if you want to be famous. You know, um, well, prostitution is just the beginning. I mean, that's like, that's a given. That's everybody. But uh, it goes further than that. I mean, it's, it's, it's again, it's, it's kind of in a way like suicide, um, you know, point of no return where you, 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 you think you're never going to come back. So that would be in the Bible calls that the second death. But that can't be, uh, or the, rather the unforgivable sin, which is um, is not really possible for people. See, I guess what these people don't realize is that they could still repent. 
But my my message to you, world, is this. Don't worry. They won't. N- none of them will. Oh, there'll be that rare exception once in a while, deathbed confession and, and conversion, you know. But in general, they don't. Don't. I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, it's like they they told me it was a backwards world. So I thought, okay, it's like a mirror world. So everything is backwards. Everything's upside down. Okay. Okay. So most people fall into the pattern of going along with the upside down. And that makes sense in, in a general way. I mean, why doesn't that make sense? That makes complete sense to me. It's upside down. People tend to go with whatever they're presented with. So it's upside down. Okay, I'll get along with it. All right, they want this in order for me to do that. that nothing, uh, you know, there's no bright lights at the stage that are accessible unless you go through this gauntlet over here. Fine, where's the gauntlet? Okay, it's that. that's not even a, that's the least I can pay. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line. And I know this gets boring because, gosh, it's so simple, isn't it? Isn't it easy to understand the world? It is exactly what I say it is, you know, at least... That's what I think. I've never been shown to be wrong. Um, you know, it's exactly what it is. And, I, and when I point it out, people get so angry, especially Christians, They, which is the majority. Yes, Christians, the majority of them, have conformed to the world. So what do you want me to do about it? There's a remnant that isn't, but the most of them have, just like they conformed to the world back in the time of Jesus. I mean, what do you want me to do about it? It's Religion is basically the conforming mechanism for the world. So if they are going into religion, I would expect that that's exactly what they will do. It's not that I don't trust them. It's not a really, it's not a matter of trust. No, it's not a matter of trust. It's just a matter of, um, eh. (laughs) it's, it's really just a matter of choice and, you know, choice is alive and well on this earth and we do have pro choice. It is law. It is the law of the land. And one can choose to be an earth dweller. One can choose to be a spiritual being, but if you choose to be spiritual, You're going to see through a lot of the Babylon babble and garbage. And if you see through it, you tend to become, how can I put it? You tend to become a, um, you know, somewhat of a pariah because you're going to, you know, be saying the thing that's inconvenient. You'll be pointing out the fault. You'll be, you know, uh, prophesying if you have the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need to say anything else. That right there is like enemy number one. Um, let me just get this. The values we've expressed in our party's platform. All those delegates opposed, say no. Let me do that again. All those delegates opposed, say no. I, um, I guess. I guess there's a problem. <laughs> I guess there's a problem there, huh? They're voting about God there. And, um, you know, the de- it's, you know, and so this is it. And that's the, um, that's the cool thing to do. But it's not rebellion. It's conformity, given the fact that Jesus was offered every kingdom in the world if he would bow down. And that's just basically them bowing down and saying, you know, we give up or we don't see and agreeing. Um, to persecute without a limit those people who uh, live their lives for God. So the message to the churches in the book of Revelation is basically this. You heard it. Repent, um, you know, because if you don't, I'll fight you. You know, if you don't, you know, you will be um, fought and let me see if I can get there. I'm, I have something against you because you've left your first love. So Jesus says this to the churches, 
repent. Um, to him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So there is this promise that, and, and then later, repent or else I will come to you quickly and I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. You know, uh, repent because you'll be judged everyone according to their works, meaning the works of, you know, what you do in your life. So, uh, you know, I'm not surprised that people that are conservative, meaning they still believe in God, would be, you know, somewhat persecuted. Um, like the Chinese, I would pray that the, uh, you know, if this is possible, that the American church would repent ultimately and, you know, and probably only through persecution would they. And that's what the Chinese prayed for, for the Americans, that there would be troubles so that they would wake up and repent and stop with this, you know, touchy-feely kind of thing. And what, But there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, it is kind of, it is what it is. To whom much is given, much is expected. Meaning people should have already known this to begin with. They should already, in their own minds... Um, you know, and, and then in another chapter, behold, I will cast her into a bed, uh, you know, the church of Thyatira. These things saith the son of God who hath eyes like the flame under fire and his feet are like fine brass. I know your works and charity and service and faith and your patience and your works. Again, works. And to the last, uh, to be more than the first, but notwithstanding all that, okay, all the good things you do. I have a few things against you because you suffer as the woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed to idols. So that, you know, just let me reword that, you know, or, or analogize it to commit um, fornication with the beast and to do things in the sight of God that are, that are denying of God. So I will give her space to repent of her fornication, Jezebel, that is, but she repented not, just as we say the church will repent not. She repented not. So the church of Thyatira is very similar to what we have in, a, in America. I'll cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her, okay, which is a spiritual adultery, which is adultery in this case has to do with um, allegiance to either Satan or God, so to Satan. And I'll cast her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the rain, searches the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Period. Are they the works of the enemy or are they works of God? Period. Um, and, but to you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many of you have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, and they, as they speak, I will put upon no, you none other burden. In other words, if you're in there, stuck in there, and you're not that, it, you, there, you have your chance. But that which you have already hold fast uh, till I come, and he that overcomes and keeps the words unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And he shall rule with a rod of iron, with the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, uh, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says in the churches. The morning star they liken to Lucifer now, but the morning star is not his. He's not the morning star. Jesus is the morning star, the bright and morning star. In other words, I'll give you, you know, the power of the throne of God. And, um, but you, you know, you're being tested in the sense of having to overcome. You might be better off... You know, people may be better off on their own. I don't know. I think, you know, it's a very dramatic test to see if Elijah will return to the churches and, and throw the pastors out and basically, in so doing, return the church to the fathers, meaning return the sons to the father. The father represents in Malachi 4, 5, the father, you know, when it says Elijah will return the fathers and the sons together. It just means they will return the, those who were lost to the, the first love, the first faith, to the Lord, to, to the truth, is what that means. It's not hard. It's not a leap. Well, let's get that. Let's see if I can. Um, this is just called the Bible Reader, and I have, uh, um, okay, let's see if uh, I had it right there. So, Mal 4, 5. 
Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He shall return the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Meaning he will return the heart of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, meaning the uh, original way of God that's, that was given. Or I'll come and smite the earth with a curse. Well, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Elijah the prophet, you know, one of the roles of, of the return of Elijah is to make, way the straight, make the way straight for the Lord, to, to, to reform, to, to cast out all these affiliations with the enemy, all these affiliations with the principles of darkness, all these affiliations with, um, you know, the demonic realm that you see so prevalent in now in entertainment and music. I mean, music has gotten to be just vapid. It's just basically almost completely of the flesh. There's almost no... And then if it's Christian music or spiritual music, a lot of it is, is you know, some of it's experiential, like in the New Age, you know, New Age music. But, you know, experience the spirit in some way, you know, and some, some people are doing some excellent... Uh, Things are discovering with music that have that can change people, and I'm hoping we can do that here. I'm hoping these words can change people. Here, here's my hope: that if you hear this or whatever, um, you and if you are one of those people that are tied up in the Babylon system uh, of church, university, this, that, or the other thing, you'll just the Lord will 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 take you. You'll say yes, and you'll just go with Him. But the prophetic word I receive is that's not going to happen. And, and does that mean there's no chance for life for them? I don't know because I know that when it says forever and ever in terms of uh, the lake of fire and brimstone, what that means is until the end of this system, it, it doesn't forever and ever means until the end of this, whatever this is, this doesn't go on forever. See, that's the thing. So forever and ever can mean, okay, till the end. And then I don't know to me, the word I've received is it doesn't matter because what's real will exist in the end. And I don't want to, you know, how we get there and, and who's going to be this and that. And I, there's a lot of preachers out there who just stick to the word of preaching, you know, hellfire damnation. And there is no possibility that, that, you know, you know, for anything. And a lot of the people stuck in the middle don't know the truth. <clears throat> they don't know the answer because unless Jesus draws you and the Father draws you to the Lord Jesus and then he draws you to the truth, unless that happens, it's not going to happen. And is it anyone's fault? I don't know. Legally, I would say, no, it's not anyone's fault and there should be more provision or more uh, some kind of opportunity. But again, then it's good for you to hear these words because then you'll know when that opportunity comes what's going on. Very important. You can't stay here forever. You can't down yourself, download yourself into a clone because you'll lose your soul if you haven't lost it already. You can't play God because it doesn't work. God closed all the doors to that. The, the, you, the fallen angels, if they could have um, been able to beat God, they would have already done it with all that technology, so it's not really possible. This is just like sort of a desultory meandering through this material realm, which doesn't exist ultimately anyway. So again, the point is moot. What, do you, what are you going to do? do? I guess the question becomes, do you want to live? And yeah, but he's going to rule with a rod of iron. I won't be able to have any fun. Um, there is no concept of fun or not fun in further dimensions of reality. There's, it's, it's all, you know, if you like, it's all ep epiphany bliss, <laughs> you know, there, there's, it's, is there, um, fun at the expense of other people? Is there fun at the expense of God? Is there fun at the expense of, you know, doing something that's not right? Um, I don't know. I've done a lot of things that are not right. And there may be fun for a little while, like, you know, say you're drinking, you know, Everyone's getting happy and singing songs. And then there's the, the, the point of paying for it later. Oh, I'm hungover. I feel lousy. Oh, gosh, I'm depressed. You know, it's, you can't beat the Lord. You can't beat this thing. There's no way to beat it. And so we're here but for, for a flicker of an instant upon the earth, just a flicker of an instant. 
and we're presented with, you know, a great wide path of rebellion that, that seems to be right to most people and they follow it. And what happens to them? I don't know. It's not my, it's not my fault. Is it? I fully understand a person choosing to have a good time and to take it easy as the Eagles say, which I think is all about that anyway, that song or, 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 um, the whole game of, you know, of, of, you know, the whole striving and game of, you know, competition and getting to the top. Once you're in, you got to really strive. The people that do the most evil stuff or the most outrageous stuff, you know, the, they become famous. And I want to do something. I want to make my mark before I get out of here. And I understand that. And I'm, I'm not going to talk you out of it. Did you make your mark? Or if you did make your mark, um, how's that working out for you now? You like that, Mark, back 10, 15, 20 years ago? And at the same time, you say, well, then what does it mean? Do I go to church? No, I'm not going to tell you what it means. If the Lord takes you, you'll notice the change. If he takes you, there will be a reaction from the world that may be unpleasant. Um. That's about it for today. I, I really, you know, it, it seems like we keep going over. It seems like there's people listening that are continuing to, okay, let's, let's put it another way. Let me spin it around another way. Here we have the earth and all the good stuff and we have the Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas and you know what I mean, and some good times and going to the football games and kind of, you know, enjoying the concerts and the fruits of the world and what the world has to offer and, you know, and all that. But so some of you are feeling really like you can't compete. You're losing in the world. You're just not there. And so the question becomes, are you going to do something awful to get in or it might backfire and you might go to jail? <laughs> you know, in other words, what price are you willing to pay? Because the people competing with you are willing to pay any price, any price, anything, anything. And if you're not, then that would mean you're like a lamb. You know, you have guilt and you wouldn't hurt anyone. And, oh, isn't that sweet, they'll say. Isn't that cute? Then you'll be our target because we got to feed. And for feeding on you, we get points. And you're dealing, and that's kind of like the reality you're dealing with. Okay, so for TIs, those of you who are, uh, feel targeted, again, the things you say happen to you are completely supernatural because they don't make sense in nature that there would be these, there's not a group of people meeting, you know, the, the ultimate in TI stuff would be like the, the movie The Game with Michael Douglas and Sean Penn, remember that? Uh, that that's perfect. But there is no group in a secret building somewhere that's got it all organized and they're figuring it all out and watching you on different monitors. And I mean, there, there could be people watching on monitors, but I mean, there isn't this organized, cohesive thing of secrecy that's against you. It's supernatural. You just have to take my word for it. I know you think there is a place where if you could just get there and get those people and eliminate them, then you'd be okay. And of course, you'll never do it because you're just talking about the basic oppression upon the earth. Yes, you're targeted because you're a threat because you're not going to reject the truth. Even if you don't have the truth yet, <clears throat> when it comes, you won't reject it. Um, and you know, the Bible is so filled with just kind of an either or thing. The whole Bible you can look at is either or, either you get right, or I will do this to you, or I will do that to you. In other words, bad things are going to happen to those who conform to the world, and the bad things that are going to happen to them will happen in real time in this earth because we all reap what we sow. If you sign on to a system that kills innocents, then at some point your innocence will be killed or you will go through tragedy. And I was just thinking, well, I can't sum up because I don't know where people are at because there's a whole bunch of people who are coming out of Babylon and into the Lord. And they're just going to do it and they're in the most odd places. People who have had fame, people who have had, uh, who figured out that that wasn't where it was at, you know. But I mean, people who have had, 
you know, people who are tired of the world, who people who are sick and tired of the corruption, people who are sick and tired of the double standard, people who are sick and tired of going nowhere, going in circles, you know, being good so they can get along with people, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, they agree with all the coolest, latest stuff so they get along. And yet they're sinking, sinking, sinking slowly down. And these are people that, if given the chance, they would welcome a new beginning. And it looks like, okay, I've gone over now. I was going to talk to you 30 minutes, and now look look where what's happened. And, and so I will say, let's put this to an end, and, uh, and I will see you next time. Uh, this is Zef Daniel from the studio. Zedja! And uh, so this may sound a little...